God is in his holy place, God who unites those who dwell in his house. He himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being at Mass this morning. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses did exactly as the Lord had commanded him. On the first day of the first month of the second year, the dwelling was erected. It was Moses who erected the dwelling. He placed its pedestals, set up its boards, put in its bars, and set up its columns. He spread the tent over the dwelling and put the covering on top of the tent as the Lord had commanded him. He took the commandments and put them in the ark. He placed poles alongside the ark and set the propitiatory upon it. He brought the ark into the dwelling and hung the curtain veil, thus screening off the ark of the commandments as the Lord had commanded him. Then the cloud covered the meeting tent and the glory of the Lord filled the dwelling. Moses could not enter the dwell a meeting tent because the cloud settled down upon it and the glory of the Lord filled the dwelling. Whenever the cloud rose from the dwelling, the children of Israel would set out on their journey, but if the cloud did not lift, they would not go forward. Only when it lifted did they go forward. In the daytime, the cloud of the Lord was seen over the dwelling, whereas at night the fire was seen in the cloud by the whole house of Israel in all the stages of their journey. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house continually, they praise you. Blessed the man whose strength you are, they go from strength to strength. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. I had rather one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I had rather lie at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. 
How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, mighty God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both new and the old. When Jesus finished these parables, he went away from there. The Gospel of the Lord. So we continue to hear the parables from Matthew, and in our first readings, we continue to hear the struggle of the Israelites between sin and sainthood, right? Between doing the right and the wrong. And we have Moses kind of bridging, trying to bridge the gap and continuing to intercede to try to reconcile. You know, we have Aaron, oh, we threw the gold into the fire and a a calf came out. (laughs) You know, I mean, oftentimes we try to justify our actions when they're not good. But we need to understand that God is a God of love and compassion and forgiveness and understanding. And that's why he came, to be one of us, to endure what we endure. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And that needs to be our motivation, God's love. Not guilt and remorse and regret and our brokenness but understanding that we are loved. And that's why God came. He loved us that much. It needs to change our hearts. You know, we can understand that in our heads some, but it needs to change our hearts. In the Psalms we hear, a humble and contrite heart, Lord, you will not spurn. Create a clean heart in me, put a steadfast spirit within me. We need to continue to strive for that. The other day we celebrated St. Alphonsus Liguori, who was very scrupulous, hyper in his understanding of his sinfulness. But at some point in his life, after his worldly success, he came to understand that he needs to find some middle ground. between being lax about his sinfulness and being hyper-rigorous and strict about his sinfulness and understanding God's love. And it changed him. 
And he became this tremendous priest and confessor. And this Sunday we'll celebrate the transfiguration. Jesus, you know, showing the glory of God and himself. And what's in store for us? The glorification of our own bodies. To be with him forever in heaven. But again, we need to get out of the darkness and into the light. And oftentimes that darkness is our own selves. We need to understand that we are the treasure. We are the pearl of great price. We are the lovely dwelling place that our responsorial psalm talked about. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord? Do we believe that that is us? The Holy Spirit dwells in us. Jesus dwells in us. We receive Jesus. So let us continue to try to interiorize that. Because that's what's going to make the difference. In here and then it will make the difference out there. Because you're worth it. Please stand. Secure in the knowledge of the Father's love for us, let us now turn to him in prayer. For the church, may she continue to lead the body of Christ as Jesus desires through his love and care. Let us pray to the Lord. For all nations and peoples of the world, may the Lord's call for justice and peace and for peace over war guide them in all they do. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have difficulty finding meaningful and steady employment, may God strengthen and uphold them. Let us pray to the Lord. For this Eucharistic assembly, May God's grace help us to keep the Eucharist at the center of our lives and prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, may they be reunited in glory with Christ, our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. For Maureen Fahey, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. For what else shall we pray? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 And for all those special intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Ever loving and gracious Father, we humbly ask that you hear and answer our petitions. We place before you today through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. the mystery of this one and all, may we come to share the divinity of Christ and hold himself to share the divinity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in your eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are sent to the temptation, but to the Holy Spirit. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace. I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into the Bible, but only say the word and my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Once again, thank you so much for coming to Mass this morning and have a great day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the Lord. Thank you.